Hi class, uh, this video that I'm creating now is to help you to work uh, to, to uh, do simulation number three, which applies to chapter 13 in Berenson and Levine, which discusses simple linear regression or linear regression, the relationship or linear relationship between two numerical variables. Um, in order to, and as a byproduct, besides practicing and learning about uh, chapter 13, I also want you to have a better understanding of the idea of the p-value that's so important in statistics. So the idea is to create uh, artificial data, which is simulation, that by its very nature really has no relationship between the variables. And one way of doing that is by picking random numbers. If you pick a bunch of random x's and, and random y's, they're they have no relationship. And so the question is, if we see a relationship, it has to be spurious and represent a type 1 error, representing, you know, rejecting a 0 when a 0 is true, or saying there's a relationship when there really is no relationship. But because with five numbers, you're hardly ever going to see a, a, a random number. Five pairs of random numbers, you're not going to see a random relationship. Um, so we do it 20 times, which is, as, as per the instructions, and then we do it for step two of the simulation. We do it two that we use 2,000 pairs of numbers. Here, for sure, you'll see no relationship because with five pairs of numbers, you might just by luck see some numbers lining up along a straight line. All right, so let's just start by picking an x variable, and we use the equal sign to represent a formula. Oh, by the way, I'm already assuming at this point that you went to tools and you already use the the add-ons, the add-ins, uh, which I've done already, um, to add the data analysis tool pack. So that's already there. Uh, equals ran between between open paren zero comma nine. The computer is going to pick a random number when you hit enter happens to pick a 3. I can then take those numbers and drag it down five for a total of 5 random numbers, 61019. I can then take that bunch of numbers and copy them over to the next position. And now we have call this column Y. And now we go to the Tools, Data Analysis, Tools, Data Analysis, doesn't work. Why is oh? Because I was out of the was in the middle of the cell. Tools, data analysis. Let's pick regression. Okay. We want to input. The, we're going to leave. Leave the tell the computer that the first row represents the labels. Variable x height and weight, or x and y in this case. Uh, the y variables go from b zero to b six. The x variables go from a1 to A6. You simply, there's nothing else to check here, and you hit OK, and we have our results. Now the results are interpreted. First of all, the first on line 4, you're going to see the multiple R, which is basically in the case of chapter 13, the correlation. R squared, which is the 46 on 46, is 0.21. That's the coefficient of determination. We've been ignoring the adjusted R squared. The standard error of the estimate, which is the uh, standard error, sometimes SCE in chapter 13, uh, is tells you basically how close the dots are to the straight line that you would fit through the data. I didn't ask you to graph it, but you uh, could graph it using Excel. And there are five pairs of observations. Then we didn't really learn about analysis of variance in this context, um, but the chapter 10 analysis of variance applies here. But what's more important is that the uh, we're told that the intercept is 0 0.30. Now, theoretically, if you did 2,000 numbers, like you'll be doing soon, the intercept, because you will get basically a horizontal line going through the middle of the data, which is at 4.5. So this is a, and the and the slope is 0.27. The t value, which you've learned how to calculate in chapter 13, but it does it for you here. And finally, the most importantly, the p value, the significance of the correlation, and the significance of the straight of how close the dots. Uh, fit a straight line. And we're told here that they don't really fit a straight line because they are random. And if you graph it, it's more or less, more or less like a blob of dots. And the p-value is 0.43, which happens to match up with the p-value for the overall regression. Now, we want to do this a second time. So the first pair of numbers 
um, let's go back to sheet one. Now we have a different set of numbers. And this time we can again ask for it to do uh, tools, data analysis, regression, okay. Um, the X and Y are the same as before. I mean, the positions, you just said okay. And this time we're told that the uh, correlation is now 0.37. Because each time you go back to that sheet, it's going to give you random numbers. The intercept is 0.3.3, close to the ideal 4.5. The slope is 0.62, the B1. The, the, of course, the intercept is the B0, B sub 0. The p value is still not significant in sheet uh, 4. It was the sheet 3. Let's do it a third time. Oh, no, we just go straight to tools, uh, data analysis, regression, OK, OK. And now we have a third set of results. Now you're going to take these numbers and you know copy and paste them into a table as I so showed you in part one of the simulation three. And eventually you're going to do this by dragging down these numbers to 2,000 pairs of numbers. Run your regression one last time and notice, of course, that there's clearly no relationship to p-values bigger than 0.05, while it might be smaller than 0.05 randomly among the 20 sets of five numbers. But among the 2,000, there would definitely be a random, um, a random, uh, there was no relationship because it's a random 2,000 pairs of numbers. So the correlation should be very close to zero, which is the true value. The slope should be close to zero. The intercept should be close to four and a half because the horizontal line goes right down the middle of the dots. The middle between zero and nine on the y-axis is at 4.5. I hope this was helpful and please give me feedback so I can improve it for further classes.